Welcome back everyone. This is our second worked example in heat transfer 310 for mechanical engineers. In this problem, we're again interested in external flow. We have water flowing over a cylindrical pillar with a constant surface temperature. We're asked to find the average Nusselt number, calculate the average heat transfer coefficient, and I'll also find the heat transfer per unit length of our cylindrical pillar. If we were going to sketch out the problem, it would look something like this. We see our cylindrical pillar. We have in the free stream a water, a temperature, and a velocity. Our cylinder has a diameter and a surface temperature. And we're asked to find the average Nusselt number, the average heat transfer coefficient, and we'll also find the heat transfer per unit length of our cylindrical pillar. The first assumption we'll make is that the cyl cylinder is isothermal. While this may not be strictly true, it gives us a framework to answer the problem analytically. The fluid and material properties are constant. We will assume that convection heat transfer is much greater than radiation from the surface, and that the system is at steady state. Like the last problem, we'll follow our convection flow chart. We want to understand the geometry and boundary conditions, determine relevant properties at an appropriate temperature, calculate the Reynolds number, choose an appropriate convection correlation, and solve for the heat transfer coefficient. The geometry of our problem is again external flow, but this time over a cylindrical pillar. Again, our boundary condition in this problem is that the cylinder is isothermal, meaning it has a constant temperature. So for cylinders, we have a couple of different options for Nusselt number correlations. This is the first. Remember here that the Reynolds number are based on the diameter of the cylinder, right? This first Nusselt number correlation is a little bit cumbersome to work with. So instead of this one, I'm going to try to use this Nusselt number correlation if I can. This is an experimentally derived correlation. And we know that for given Reynolds number ranges, shown on table 7.2, we can find the coefficients C and M. So these values have been found by experiment. If I can, I'm going to use this correlation because it's a little bit easier to use in my analytical solution. Now, I have to find relevant properties at appropriate temperatures. We will use the average temperature between the surface of the cylinder and the free stream temperature. In this case, that average temperature is 27 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Kelvin. If I look at table A.6 for properties of water, I can see that 300 degrees Kelvin is one of the rows on my table. So I won't have to do any interpolation to find the viscosity, the conductivity of the fluid, and the Prandtl number. With this information, I'm ready to find the Reynolds number. I have to remember that the Reynolds number for flow over a cylindrical pillar is based on the diameter of the pillar. I know all of this information so I can calculate Reynolds number. I find that my Reynolds number is 13.94. We know that it's possible that the flow is laminar at some points on the cylinder and turbulent on other points around the periphery but we're just going to use this Nusselt number in our average Nusselt number correlation, or at least we'll try. When I calculate Reynolds number, I have to remember to carry the units and make sure that they all cancel out. That way I know that this dimensionless parameter is actually dimensionless. Armed with the Reynolds number, we'll try to find an appropriate convection correlation. Again, I'm going to try to use this Nusselt number correlation 
And to do that, I need to know the Reynolds number, which I've calculated to be just less than 14. I look now on table 7.2, and I see that I can use this correlation for Reynolds numbers between 4 and 40. And in that case, I can look on the table and find values for the constants C and M. Now that I know those constants, I can solve for my average heat transfer coefficient. Using the definition of the Nusselt number and my Nusselt number correlation, I can find the average heat transfer coefficient. First, I'll find the Nusselt number, which in this case is just over 4.5. Now I can use the definition of the Nusselt number to rearrange for the heat transfer coefficient. I know all the parameters in this equation except the heat transfer coefficient. So I can solve for H in my calculator, checking with the units again, and find that the heat transfer coefficient is 277 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Knowing the heat transfer co coefficient lets me find the heat transfer per unit length between my cylindrical pillar and the flow that passes over it. Here, Q prime is equal to Q over the width or the length of the pillar. Q is equal to HA times delta T. But I remember that this area is the area that heat is being transferred through. In this case, that area is the perimeter of the circle multiplied by the height of the pillar. Now my heights cancel, which is good because I don't know the height of the pillar. I know all of the parameters in this equation except for Q dot or Q prime. So I can work this out on my calculator and I find that 434.9 watts per meter are leaving the plate. I know heat is leaving the plate in this case because the pillar, here I'm calling it a plate, but the cylindrical pillar is warmer than the fluid that's moving over it. And after I've done this, I'm finished the problem. Good job, everyone. And I'll see you next time on Worked Heat Transfer Examples.